Most people probably never owned a Grok AI chip since they're not sold directly to consumers like us. But we can certainly try Grok's AI chips through Grok Cloud and use them for inference. And if you look at how fast Grok can actually run AI models, like you can see from here in real time, it's hard not to be blown away by their service level agreement when it comes to their tokens per second. But despite all this, it's hard to not question how a $20 billion deal like this could actually make sense, especially given the fact that Grok's revenue is less than $500 million after operating for nine years. So today, we're going to dig deep into Grok's AI chip and find out what makes what they call LPU chips different from NVIDIA's GPU, and also find out why NVIDIA is spending this much into their quote-unquote acquisition of Grok. Welcome to Caleb Bright's Code, where every second counts. Let's start with addressing the real problem first. And the problem is the dichotomy between model architecture and hardware. And while each influences one another, they also sort of innovate on their own. And in many ways, model architecture sometimes has to compromise to hardware limitations and hardware sometimes accelerates or limits model architecture. For example, we know that context window has been drastically increasing over time to the point where state-of-the-art models today take up to 1 million context window. But this increase in context window comes at a price. Calculating attention for this much context length takes a lot of computation, and computation grows more as the context window grows, more specifically in O of n squared complexity. And when we talk about the difference between Grok and NVIDIA chips, the bottleneck isn't necessarily in the computation since computation can be done fairly fast these days but the limitation is actually in memory, specifically what's called KV cache. As the underlying model works with your input to auto-regressively generate output tokens, it needs to store all of this into memory. For NVIDIA chips, they offer what's called HBM, high bandwidth memory, which is used to move large amount of data in and out of HBM at high speeds since they're typically stacked directly for faster access as the context length builds. But for Grok, everything is one dimensional. Grok takes a different approach by not using HBM or GDDR6 that houses these KV cache, but rather it flattens the entire operation into a single static RAM or SRAM. While the theory behind this can easily get out of hand really fast, the conceptual difference here is what allows Grok to run extremely faster than Nvidia chips when you compare them together. Grok accesses the KV cache stored directly in memory location, while NVIDIA chips loads and unloads from HBM, which makes the entire process more dependent on memory interconnect. But this doesn't come without sacrifice. SRAM is not only a lot more expensive, they also take up a lot more real estate. So Grok's AI chips typically have a few hundred megabytes, whereas NVIDIA's data center grade GPUs have upwards to 190 gigabytes or more, which doesn't even come close when you compare it with Grok. Also, the flattened nature of Grok doesn't allow for more nuanced optimization that we can find in NVIDIA chips like in the L1 and L2 cache. These caches come useful when it comes to sharing and pooling commonly used memory that are repeated when we batch or shard or even in certain architectures like mixture of experts. So as you can see, there's this strange dichotomy between model architecture and hardware, and depending on how you pair these up, you will create different strengths, and one of which is Grok's ultra-fast inference AI chips that's optimized for language-specific tasks. One important misunderstanding that I want to clear up when it comes to Grok's chips is that Grok's LPU is highly deterministic, meaning unlike NVIDIA's GPU where we can dynamically use HBM as needed, the flattened nature of LPU where you have to reserve and predetermine work makes Grok actually very ineffective in anything else but certain types of inference. So when it comes to training or fine tuning, or even video and vision and multimodal models, as well as most agentic use cases and RAG, where you have to work with changing context lengths and sharing and waiting for CPU work, you're going to see Grok AI chips start to diminish in its advantages. That's why when you go to Grok Cloud, their product offering is somewhat limited to certain types of work. And also the models that they support are typically smaller, like under 70 billion parameters 
except in the case for Kimi K2, which is most likely quantized to N4 for inference. So at first glance, their pricing and tokens per second might seem very attractive, while in reality, NVIDIA chips are more general purpose chips, while Grok is very niche in terms of when they become a better choice than NVIDIA. So really, the question comes down to this, why? Why would NVIDIA spend so much to acquire Grok's core assets and talent for $20 billion? Here are some of my thoughts on that matter. While looking at guys like Chamath, who's easily making $3 billion from this deal and other associated funds and capitals that would highly benefit from something like this, I think Jensen is placing a bet that the inference market will grow as the AI industry establishes into 2028, where AI data centers are projected to come to its end. And while inference will still run on NVIDIA's general purpose chips, the fact that NVIDIA just poached top talent from Grok and their license and intellectual property is signaling that NVIDIA could be innovating a new chip in their own brand that could service this growing market. Especially if you think about robotics and humanoids where speed actually does matter a lot. So NVIDIA isn't necessarily acquiring a company that is making $500 million for $20 billion, but NVIDIA is buying all the sweat equity that is materialized into their intellectual property and talent so that they can leverage them to turn into NVIDIA's inference products as soon as possible without breaking antitrust law. What do you think? 